All right. When we don't realize who we are in Christ, our faith will be crippled. If you don't feel worthy to exercise your authority in Christ, now notice that word worthy, then you won't be doing it in the fullness of faith and will lack assurance. Satan will Satan works diligently to program people's minds to feel unworthy. Now let's stop right there and be honest with yourself. How many have felt unworthy in your life? Sometimes in your life, all of us. Now we know that that is a root problem. And as a minister for 50 years and some more than that, I have found that to be true in people's lives. I have found it to be true in my life. But I'm here to tell you tonight, it ain't got nothing to do with our worthiness or whatever. It has to do with what God has done for us. Now, let's, I'm going to finish reading that. Feel unworthy and unable to walk in power of God here on earth. Walking around with our heads down. This is one of the most popular strongholds in existence today in the body of Christ. The truth is that we, by our own power and efforts, are worthless. We settle that. But it is the blood of Christ that makes us worthy. Now, are you worthy tonight? What has made you worthy? Now, think for a moment. If we call ourselves unworthy... That's denying the power of the blood of Christ. I've had to repent. I literally had to repent of saying, God, forgive me for not accepting what Jesus did for me. Because it showed that I was looking at myself and not what the blood has done on behalf of Bob Tilton. The blood has made me worthy. And for me to call myself unworthy is blasphemous. I really believe it is. Now, I did it in ignorance, and so did you. Now, you think about it. Until we can come to understand who we are in Christ, our new identification of what God has did for us, we're going to walk around unhappy. No life in us. Condemnation eating us for breakfast, lunch, and supper. And during the middle of the night. But when that revelation knowledge of what Christ has done for us, make it us worthy to approach God Almighty to be able to come into the very presence of a holy God because of the power of the blood. Yeah. Now, thank you. I appreciate that. I see one sister has it over there. I'll keep pumping. Let's finish reading this. But it is the blood of Christ that makes us worthy. Everybody say, it is. The blood of Christ that makes me worthy. Forgive me, Lord, for not believing that 24-7. Forgive me, Lord, for looking at myself and not the Lord and what he has done. Therefore, I have nothing to boast about but everything to praise him for. I'm free. That's it. Until you accept that, acknowledge that, meditate on that and receive that and let that just saturate in your being, every part of your spirit, every part of the bone structure of your body, every cell in your brain, every part of your flesh absorbs what the Lord has done. You'll just walk around poor me. And all God's people said, Amen. am I preaching truth tonight? That's true. All right. Now let's finish this now. But it is the blood of Christ that makes us worthy. And if we say we are unworthy, when the blood says we are, then we are denying the work that Christ did for us on the cross. You might want to do some more repenting. Just go ahead. Just repent. Denying? The Lord can't do no more for us. 
if we don't accept what he did. So you go, we're going to have to get a new image of ourselves. We're going to have to get a brand new understanding that we are new creatures in Christ, recreated in Christ Jesus. Now, no human thinking or mind power is going to grasp that. But when the light turns on, you will see. Just like the prophet's servant saw when his eyes was open, there was more with us than them. That's how you're going to come into this revelation. This is how you're going to come into liberty. When you say, God, I want to see really how you see me. Rick said something in our Sunday school Sunday. Very profound. I caught it just like that. His daughters gave him Father Day cards. You're the greatest father in the world. You're generous, you're kind, you're merciful. You're good to my mother. I mean, just awesome. And he says, you know, that's how they see me. But I don't see me that way. And yet God sees me like they see me. Are you out there? How do you see yourself? Oh, I like to hear every testimony. Oh, would you be, huh? Well, I'm just, just, just no good. I tell you, boy, I'm just a no good. Yeah, I'm just. A, I, I, my, my daddy told me that long. I bet it's so in some of our minds that that that's. That's not how God sees us. Can we comprehend the love of God? John says it in, in John 3. Put it up on the board. 1 John 3. 1 John 3, verse 1. John was set back on this thing. I mean, he was set back on this thing. Look what it says on the board. See what an incredible quality of love the Father has given, shown, and bestowed on us. That we be permitted to be named and called and counted the children of God. My Father is God. My Savior is Jesus. And the Holy Spirit is my helper. Who is your Father? God. Look what it says. So we are the, so we are, and so we are. Ain't going to be, we is. But until you see or I see how God sees us, we're not going to see many miracles. This is going to take a, a th th this was on that board right there, those words right there. It's going to take a, re notice what the Bible says. <clears throat> it's by the renewing of our mind, getting that old stronghold out of our brain, that we're just an old sinner worth nothing. No, wait a minute. Christ did not die for nothing. He died for you and me. <coughs> You're the apple of his eye. You got to get to get this to, 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 to down to where you can identify with it. That's why we got to identify with it. I need somebody that has a, uh, Lisa, would you come up? Lisa. Okay, come quick. Oh, man, this is good. So we got we to grab hold of this. Tell me about your precious little daughter. How do you see her? Oh, wow. That's it. That's it. Look at that. Look at there. Look at there. <laughs> oh, my God. Tell me about it. She's just wonderful. She's my little buddy. She, she's willing to, to, to do things and try new things, and she always has a hug for, it and for whoever needs it. Do you think God sees you that way? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> and that's, you, you, get that, you let that get down in your bosom. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, I, listen, I, you just want to take her and hold her, squeeze her. Oh, I love her. Oh, I just thought this is what? 
Uh, she's just, she's just an awesome it's little girl. Unexplainable. It's unexplainable. Yes. Okay. She's thank amazing. You. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Now you get hold of that picture. Hallelujah. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Ah. Now. Once you can understand you, not the world, forget about everybody else. God is centered on you tonight. See, see, <laughs> I know we, we want to see it. We want to see it from my viewpoint, but we want to see it from God's viewpoint. God is love. The Bible says he has power, but God is love. What manner of love is this that the Father has, has stored upon us? What manner of love? Well, how big is this love? What did Paul say that we might know the height, the depth, the width, and the length? Why, Paul? Why? Because that's what's going to set the human beings free. That's what's going to set you free. That's what's going to change you from glory to glory, from glory to glory. Oh, every, every wife wants the husband to, to love them just like that. Susan loves me just like that. Do you realize the joy she has because she loves me? I love her like that. I love being around her. I love to watch her. I, I love to see her cook. <laughs> Just, just walking across the floor. Oh, I just love it. Can you understand that? How many can understand that? I mean, 82 years old, 81. She's beautiful, wonderful. Love, my love, I feel my love. I, my, what manner of love do, do I have for my wife? It came from God. Now that I know that I'm loved, I can love you. I know that I'm loved. That's why I love you, Annie. I love you, I love you more. I <laughs> <laughs> that, that <coughs> do, am I coming through? Yes. So what are we going to do about this? We're going to pray that the spirit of wisdom and revelation, that we're going to be like John. John, what type of love is this? i got to know. i got to know this love. I've struggled all these years. I've, I've had relationship problems with my children, with my, with my mate. God, i got to know that love for myself. i got to know where I can, oh, be loved myself, where I can love others without being critical. Putting them down, just loving them. Another scripture I want you to put on the board Romans chapter 2, verse 4. I know I'm putting a lot of unction in this, but I feel it. I feel it. I know it. Or are you so blind as to tri trifle with and presume upon and despise and underestimate the wealth of his kindness? Look at that scripture. Let it burn in your soul. And forbearance and long sufferance and patience. Are you unmindful or actually ignorant? Of the fact that God's kindness, His love, is intended to lead you to repentance, to change your mind and inner man to, escape, to accept God's will, and that is that you know His love. Read that scripture. Look at it. Let it burn in your heart. Oh, the devil don't want you to read that. We got an enemy of our soul. You'll keep us blind until you get and meditate on that. Do you understand the goodies in that? How many see the power in that, those scriptures there? Look at those scriptures. Let them burn in your soul. Look at them. Are you blind? Are you trifling? Do, are you underestimating the wealth, the wealth, the wealth of his love and kindness? 
It leads us to repent. And that's what it's done to me. God forgive me. Putting myself down. Somebody comes up and says, Bob, that was a good message. Oh, that was the Lord. Oh, it's the Lord. Why do I say that? Now, I don't say that no more. I say thank you. I've learned to say thank you when I go home. I say, I give it all to God. Say, I receive it for him. Somebody comes to say, I love you. Do you get... <coughs> you understand what I'm saying? You just, you, you just can't quite take it. It, it just don't penetrate. It's too heavy for me. I mean, I'm so unworthy. Don't you understand? I'm so unworthy. No, you're not. You're saying that the blood of Christ has not done its work. I don't mean to yell, but I'm happy. <laughs> Am I coming through? Do I need to pump a little harder? <laughs> Just keep pumping, right? Somebody's going to get this. And if you run around the building, just go ahead. I'll run with you. <laughs> I'm telling you, when that, when that truth comes into the human heart. Oh, thank you, now, Bob, don't speak in tongues unless you interpret it. Well, I'm just happy right now. I'm sorry. Y'all just had to forgive me. <sighs> God loves you. The war. Just accept it. Go ahead and accept it. How many wives just, oh, my husband would just love me. Just, just look at me and say, you're beautiful today. You got rollers all in your hair. Got your house coat on. Look like you've been through the threshing machine. And he looks at you and says, honey, I love you. I tell Susan every time she has her hair rolled up. And, 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 oh, honey, you look so beautiful, honey. But you see, that, that's the inside of me is talking to her. I love her. Rollers and all, house coat and all, no shoes. I love you. I love you. Now listen, when you understand your love, I'm telling you, it's gonna it's gonna revolutionize your life. Bondages will fall off of you like you've never known before. I'm telling you the truth. When that revelation hits you, you're going to be up here preaching. I'll be sitting down there. Hey, go, man, go, man, go. Lord, that they might know the height, the depth, the width of your love in Ephesians. Because when they do, Lord, oh, life will begin to flow like they've never known before. Even your body will absorb that and be healed. Every tissue of your body will come into conformity to the Son of God. That's how powerful love is. Now God's going to show it. Don't you have a part in it? You've got to want it. You've got to realize that God will give you that spirit of wisdom and revelation. All right, let's start from the beginning now. <clears throat> That's the conclusion. Are we ready? Who we really are in Christ, our identity in Christ. <clears throat> this is one elementary subject that most Christians still don't fully understand. And it is a powerful key to spiritual breakthrough for countless believers around the globe today. Don't believe you're just an old forgiven sinner just because some pastor tells you so. Look these things up in the Word of God for yourself and know the truth. For Jesus said clearly that if we continue in His Word, we will know the truth and the truth will set us free. John 8, 32, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The opposite of truth is deception or false belief. It will cause you to live in bondage unnecessarily. This subject is no exception. If you see yourself as a failure, you will not be able to boldly exercise your authority in Christ because you will feel unworthy. 
even after Christ has made you worthy. If you claim to be unworthy after the blood of Christ has made you worthy, then you are denying the work of Christ in your life. Just go ahead and repent. I did. Just, just, right where you're at, just repent. Ask God. You know I'm speaking truth. Just ask God to forgive you. I did many times on that subject. Now the next verse of Scripture I want you to put up on the board is Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Turn the page. <coughs> Look at that on the board now. We are God's own handiwork. Say, I'm God's handiwork. His workmanship. Now, what do you say about his workmanship? What do you say about his workmanship? You are his workmanship. What do you say about his workmanship? Good job, Lord. <laughs> the Lord ain't making no jump. Jump, that's a good one. Junk. Look. Recreate it. Say recreate it. In Christ Jesus. You ain't what you used to be no more. That died out. The first Adam, because of the disobedience of one man, the first Adam, we all became sinners. We know that. <clears throat> but that Adam died in Christ. We were baptized into Christ. And now we've been resurrected in Christ. New creation. You've got to see yourself. You've got the same body. How many has ever had a car and you, and you had to take the old motor out and put a brand new motor? Outside, the car looked just like it always did. But that motor was purring like a kitten. You put the accelerator down and that baby would go. We got a brand new motor. That brand new motor is us. What you see in the mirror is not you. That's only your body. That's only your, your earthly suit. That's not really you. You know what Paul says? I know no man after the outward appearance anymore. I used to know Jesus that way, but I know him now in the inner man. The inner man is what's been changed. The inner man that's been recreated. Now, all we got to do, these bodies are instruments. So God says, now don't yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness. That's these right here, your tongue, your ears, your eyes, all that. No, yield them to righteousness. Let the, old, the, the, the new man be in control now and tell the body to start doing righteous works. See, you got to see that. How many sees that? All right. When you look in the mirror tonight, that's your sure earthly suit. You're going to leave that behind. Yeah. You know, keep it all pretty up while you can. <laughs> but that ain't you. What did Peter say in, in, in Peter about the, the wife? Let your inner man show the beauty. Let it be gentle and kind. That's how you can win your husband over by that inward new creation that's been created in you. Your spirit man. All right. Look what it says now. Recreate, born anew. Hey, born anew. What was born anew? <coughs> Folks, my face was not born anew. Spirit. It's wasting away fast. But that don't bother me. Because I got an inward face. That's being changed from glory to glory. Look what it says. That we may do good works which God predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. The good life. I'm trying to think of this man that uh, was in the, the Vietnam War. Roger, no, not Roger. Davis, David, or something. He was burnt all over. Who? 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Remember? You remember him? I mean, he was burnt awful. I mean, he thought his wife wouldn't even want to see him. He looked so horrible. And she comes up, and he's looked burnt awful. And and he and she says, "Oh, honey, don't worry about it. You never was good looking anyway, so don't worry about it." <laughs> That's true love. Because she saw the inner man in David. The inner man that shines. The inner man that's been recreated in Christ Jesus. Do you see my inner man? Have you touched my inner man? I've touched yours. I don't know you after the outer man. I know you after the inner man. That's found in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. You ever want to look it up? Long about verse 15 or 16, somewhere right in there. All right, let's finish looking at that. What well, we did. All right, now let's get our paper again. Time's going by. We're having fun, aren't we? I want you to say to yourself, I am worthy. Okay. Now there's something in us that don't want to say that. Is there something in you that opposes that? Raise your hand. Oh, we got one honest person. There's one back to one there. There's one up here. Got three honest people in the, in the fellowship tonight. <laughs> Anybody up there? Any honest folks up there in the hayloft? <laughs> I am worthy because Jesus' blood has made me worthy. See, if you don't say and receive, you're, not, you're worthy now. See, I know all the, I used to be an evangelist. And, and listen, when you're talking to lost people, you got to get them lost before you can get them saved. I understand all of that. I know how to address that situation. But I'm talking to Christian people. I'm talking about people that have died with Christ. I'm talking about people that have been resurrected to walk in the newness of life. I'm talking to the church. When every cell comes to that place to know that they are loved, they will take that very love of, love of loving themselves as God's recreated being and love others. That's the way it works. He gives us his righteousness and we bear the fruit of righteousness. He gives us love and we bear the fruit of his love to others. Hello? That's just the way it works. Just receive it by faith. Not complicated. That's just the way it is. I can love you because he first loved me. I can love God because he first loved me. Are we getting it? Very simple. Not complicated. And don't say that you don't have the love of God because you're a born again Christian and the love of God's been shed in your heart by the Holy Ghost. He gives us his love. He gives us redemption. He gives us everything we have. Therefore, we can say what the Lord says. It is because of him we've been born again. It's because of him that we have eternal life. It's because of him all my sins are forgiven. All my sins have been forgotten. All my sins have been removed as far as the east is from the west. And I'm clean before God Almighty. Well, Brother Bob, I I sinned yesterday. It's simple. It's not complicated. God made provisions for that. First John what? All right, let's hear it again. First John what? First John what? Very simple, not complicated. Is God faithful? Is God just to do what? To beat you over the head? No, to forgive you, love you, and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Now, get up on your feet and claim the... The glory of God. Amen. Woo! What a salvation. No wonder the, 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 the Hebrew writer says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? But see, it's got to become a reality to us as we say, God, I need to know by your spirit. Burst that into my being, Lord. I want to know. I want to know. I want to know your love. Because when you know his love, people can talk about you. You can care less. You just have compassion on them. Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. That's how love works. (sighs) Wow. 
All right, let's finish reading. This is good, isn't it? So the blood has made you worthy. You are loved by God the Father. Are you are loved by God. Look what it says. You are loved by God, not because of what you've done, but because of who you are. The Bible tells us that we were, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He longs to have a relationship with you even before you became his child. Have you ever had a dog that you want to just, you know, some dogs are just, you can love up on them, they'll love up on you. Have you ever had a dog like that? Have you ever had a dog you try to reach and they go, and they run off? My last dog was like that. It took me a long time to get that dog to sit in my lap and him and me have fellowship together. Because he thought I was going to hurt him. I'd never done nothing to hurt that dog. Fed him three meals a day, loved up on him day and night. But until he could finally realize that I was his friend, and I'm there for him, and I loved him, he finally came around, and him and me had a little fellowship together. But I love one of them dogs that just, just you can just hold, and they just love you. I don't like to kiss them, do you? But anyway... <laughs> <laughs> Bless his heart. <laughs> anyway, <coughs> excuse me. We must understand. I'm gonna, let, me, let me stop here. Who do you want to have fellowship with? On the human scale. How about one of your children? But they run from you all the time. Because they're scared you're going to talk about Jesus or something or point something bad out of them or something. But you just long to just be able to sit down with maybe your son or your, or your daughter and, and just love up on them and they love up on you. Now I've got three daughters. That, I mean, yeah, I've got three. I've got two that just loves up on me all the time. They see me as the greatest dad in the world. They see me those cards, and I'm, I'm, I'm like Rick up there. You know, they tell me I'm the greatest. I said, no, Rick is the greatest. <laughs> but I got to stop that. I got to say, yeah, that's how they see me. That's how God sees you. He wants fellowship with you. And you got to find that between you and him. But you got to come to him. I shared the time about the uh, about years ago. They used to, <clears throat> 25, 30 years ago, the, the, everybody dropped their dogs off back here in the woods. You all remember that, I know. And this, this beautiful dog looked like Lassie. She came up my backyard one day. I couldn't get close to that dog. That dog see me, psh, go back in the woods. So I started putting a little food out for her. I could tell she had puppies back in the woods there. So I put some food out there and she'd eat and go back, run off. Now notice this. My goodness, my goodness brought her to me. And the next day I'd put some food, but I'd be a little closer to the food this time. But she'd come up and she'd eat and she'd run off again. One day I did this for about two weeks and the food was right before me. She'd come up and ate it. And I had my hand out like this. I didn't reach for her. I learned, you don't reach for dogs. That's how you lose fingers. <laughs> <laughs> and she smelt me. Within one week, I was sitting on the grass in the backyard and she was in my lap. And we had great fellowship together. The very next day after that event, she went in the woods and brought her family to the house. So I had a big family of dogs. And I lived ever, happy ever after. <laughs> See, the goodness of God draws us like a magnet. The more meaner you are to me, the more loving I'm going to be on you. Come on, church. That's the way that you work. I know how God works. All right. 
You are loved by God, not because of what you've done, but because of who you are. The Bible tells us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were yet mean, sinners, lost, undone, he died for us. Then, when we were in our worst shape, he longed to have a relationship with you even before you became his child. Now, can I be mean just for a little bit? It, it, it's good meanness, though. It's, it, it, I think you'll get some revelation on this. We'll just, we'll just, I won't point out anybody, but how many wives would just love to have their husband take their boots off and leave their gun in the closet and sit down and have a little fellowship with you? There's one, two. Susan and me. I said, I said, I said, honey, it's time to sit on the couch. I, I need a little fellowship. No, I'm not talking about this. Ain't got to do with the sexual thing, you know. I'm talking about just pure, beautiful. We don't care about that other part anyway. But we're talking about. <laughs> quit lying, Pastor. Okay, I'm sorry. But I'm talking about fellowshipping with my wife. How was your day? Any questions you have? Anything you want to know about the Bible? I'll ask my pastor. <laughs> but just talking and fellowshipping, and, 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 you know, she might bring up something that, that well, you know, I'm a little concerned about a, a Sandra, maybe one of my daughters. Well, well what, what is it, darling, you know? And, and, and then I said, well, honey, I know how you feel, but you know what, Je we know what Jesus said. Don't worry about anything. Let's just pray about it. You ready? Let's pray. Okay, we pray. Hold hands, we pray. Or sometimes, I remember I'd come home from work and, and I'd say, honey, I don't want no scriptures. I just want to walk. Would you walk with me? Yeah. So we'd walk all around, walk all around, and I'd just start talking, talking. Get it all out. Come home. Man, I feel great. Ha! Ah, she ain't done nothing but listen. Have you learned to be a good listener? Just listen. How many would like to have a good listener around the house? You get some of the stuff off your chest, <laughs> you know. See, fellowshipping with God. We, but I don't, I don't want to sit down and talk with God about, well, Lord, would you do this? Lord, would you do that? Well, you know, we need, God, you got to do something about Tammy or Sandra. I mean, I've got this one little person in church that needs your help. Lord. I just want to sit, Lord, I just sit there and fellowship with him. Lord, I want to thank you for everything. I love you, Lord. I appreciate you. I thank you, Lord, for the food that you've given, the life you've given. You, you, Lord, you've allowed, allowed me to be born in the United States of America. Lord, I, really, I just tell him how much I love him, how much I appreciate him, how much I really understand what he's done for me. I realize I can come into the throne room. I'm sitting on the lap of God before the evening's up. And we're having great fellowship. Next thing you know, I get up and I start speaking in tongues, clapping my hands, and Susan will come in and we'll do a little jigging and a jagging and praising God, and people think we're going crazy and that's their problem, but we're just happy in Jesus. Free! And I look over there, Susan's doing the hat, that, 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 that. Look over there, and the Lord is hat, that, 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 that. Look over there, and I'm doing hat, that, 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 that. Yeah. How many of you know the Lord liked to dance? Did you know he danced in the Bible when he was on the earth? Huh? You, don't, you didn't read that? Yeah, twirl around. I mean, they, I like the way the Jews do their dance, you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, you ever seen the fiddle on the roof? I love it. I love that. All right. Now, this is not being ungodly that I'm talking here tonight. This is what God wants. How much did he love us to send his son to die on the cross? How much did he really want fellowship with us to send his son to die on the cross and shed his blood? That's how much he wants fellowship with us, each individual. Oh, man. All right, look at the word of the Lord now. Remember, God has a part in this thing. He started it. Romans 5 eight, but God committed his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The one, this one may be hard to get your mind around, but are you ready? But it is true. God loves us with the same love that he had towards Jesus himself. Look at this passage of scripture. It's found in John 17, 23. Would you put it on the board, please? 
St. John. Boy, when I read this years ago, I was, Lord Jesus. I in them, who is them? That's us. And you in me. God in and you and me. In order that they may become one and perfectly, notice this, united that the world may know and definitely recognize that you sent me and that you have loved them, that's us, even as you have loved me. Now, I know he was talking to his disciples, but he has no respect of person, and that means us too. He loves us, God loves us, God the Father loves us as much as he loves his son, Jesus Christ. That's powerful. Let's turn our page again. Are we ready? Jesus said that the greatest love a man can show for his friend is when he lays down his life for them. Jesus laid down his life for us. Think of that. That is how valuable and dear we are to him. He laid his life down for you and me. Powerful. Look at John 15, 13. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. That's what Jesus did for us. As a matter of fact, if we don't realize the love of God, we cannot be filled. Now notice, catch this. We cannot be filled with the fullness of God. Every one of us is craving to be filled with the fullness of God. But if we don't really know his love, of course, God is love. We will lack his fullness in our lives until we come to know his deep love for us. Mark that and meditate on that. All right, let's catch it. Ephesians 3, 17, 9, 17, 19. Put it on the board, please. Ephesians 3, 17, 18, and 19. Here we go. May Christ through your faith, through your faith, actually dwell, settle down, abide, make his permanent home in your hearts. May you be rooted deep in love and found securely, securely in, on love. Woo, man, that tells me a lot right there. That you may have the power and be strong to comprehend. Comprehend by revelation knowledge and grasp by revelation knowledge with all the saints, God's devoted people, the experience of that love. Say the experience of that love. Not just words on a tablet, not just words in a book, not words on the board, but we actually experience that love. And when we experience that love, our whole personalities, our whole bondages that we're not aware of will be broken, destroyed. And that love will set you free. Just be yourself in Jesus. Wow. What is the... All right. The, the experience of that love, what is the breadth, the length, the height, and the depth of it? Now, God didn't have that pinned down just for beautiful words. He had that down that we might experience that, because until we experience that, and it's only going to come as we put our faith in God that he's going to do that in us, for it is God working in me, making me willing, and giving me the insight of just how much he loves me, and that love will set you free. Like you've never known before. See, I'm 60, no, I'm not, I'm 80, I'm sorry. I'm 82. I've struggled in this. This is why I can preach this. In my lifetime, I've struggled with, and you're, some of you are struggling with it. I know you are. The human element is there. And when we experience that, It might be a little jumping in a jive and around here we ain't seen lately. 
Because all you can do is like our dear sister get up here and say, let me tell you about my daughter. She melts my heart. I just love her. Oh, I feel like passing out. <laughs> How many can comprehend that with your children, you remember? <laughs> Let's read that again. That you may have the power and be strong to comprehend. That you may have the power and be strong to comprehend and grasp. With all the saints. God wants all the saints to be able to have the power and be strong to comprehend and grasp and experience His love. And what is the breadth, the height, the length, the width? That's something that we need to, by faith, begin to say, God, that's what I want to know. And I trust you to bring that experience in my life. Because people that you can't hardly stand now, you'll love them. You'll love them. Self will melt and disappear in his love. You won't have to struggle. Some of you are probably struggling to love me. You won't have to struggle to love me anymore. That's all you can do when God's love is manifest in your life. I mean, you understand what I'm saying? Now, we've got some of the love. We, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you're totally barren of it. But how many of you know it's, he's changing us from glory to glory, from glory to glory, from the glory? How? By his spirit. So we are tasted and we've experienced some of that glory of his love. But there is so much more glory of that love that will change us from glory to glory to glory to glory. That you won't worry about anything. You will be full of God. That's what it says. Remember we read that? What's that next verse? 19. That you may really come to know. Catch it. Now we're talking about the same theme here. Verse 17, 18, 19. Practically through experience for yourselves the love of Christ. Now, we've tasted just a little bit. Is that not true? How many realize you need more? Yes. Yeah, well, that's the beginning right there. Notice now what it says. Paul is speaking here under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, which far surpasses mere knowledge. Your little brain ain't going to be able to pick it up. You won't understand it. It'll pass your knowledge without... Uh, for. <clears throat> which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience, that you may be filled, notice, through all your being, spirit, soul, and body, until all the fullness of God may have the richest measure of the divine presence and become a body wholly filled and flooded with God himself. Can we grasp that? No. Only God can show it. But start believing for it, because that's what God wants for every one of us. Not just for ourselves, but as other people come in, we will put off a radiance of God's love that people cannot resist. That's in the scriptures. All right, got about six more minutes. You, notice this now. You were purchased at a steep price. The wages of your, uh, of your sin is death. But Jesus paid that price for you. God's word tells us that we were purchased by the precious blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. I'm so glad I don't belong to myself tonight. 1 Corinthians 6.20 For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So my body and my spirit belongs to God. Revelation 5, 9. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou was slain and have, has redeemed, meaning purchased us to God by the blood out of every redeemed, kindred, tongue, redeemed, and people back. and nation. 
We belong to God. Our bodies belong to God. The fight is over. Look what the next scripture says. But God commended his love. Let me read the next one. Why, why did Jesus purchase us with his own blood? Because of his deep love for us. And he deeply desires to have a loving relationship with you and I. See, it's not just about us, but it's about him. He wants fellowship with us. You know, to be God and have everything that he has and nobody to fellowship with, that would be sort of a drag, wouldn't it? We put you on an island by yourself. How many would like that? You got everything. You got money. You got everything you need. But you don't have no fellowship. We were created for his pleasure. Created for his pleasure. Why am I here? For his pleasure. He loves me. And he has a great future for us. Oh, a great future with great rewards. But God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We are justified and declared innocent. Everybody say, I'm innocent. I'm innocent. Who declared you innocent? Don't argue with God. <laughs> we argue with God, don't we? Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm just an old sinner. No, you're not. You've been redeemed. Yeah. So you got to get that out of your brain. Your, that old stronghold has to go. It's God's doings. If you have repented of your sins and accepted the gift of God, referring to the forgiveness of sins through the precious shed blood of Christ, then God's word tells us that we are justified, simply meaning just as if we have never sinned. Knowing that a man is not justified, Galatians 2.16, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus, Paul is saying, Christ, that we might be justified by faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. All right, this is quite a bit in here. We're going to stop right there. Hold on to this. Bring it Sunday because I'm going to touch on it Sunday also. Because I think we really need to spend a little time understanding what the Lord has done. Until that comprehension, until that can get into our spirit man, into the very fibers of our soul. <clears throat> Gil, you your arm hurting you? You cold? How many's cold? Nobody's cold. You're cold. <laughs> okay. All right.